So, hello everyone, I am back with another new video. I always make very useful videos on different topics. Now this time I select a heat gun for my video. The purpose of making video on this heat gun is because. It is a very useful item in our daily routine. There are many types of heat guns in the market. But any heat gun you select consumes a minimum of 1000 and a maximum of 2000 watts to work. The amazing thing about this heat gun is that. It only consumes maximum 300 watts of power to work. So I decided to test this item and see if this heat gun can compete for high power heat guns or not. So enjoy this video.
friends this thing is working well. The best thing about this heat gun is low electricity consumption. I currently have a small 360 watt solar power system and this heat gun is absolutely running well on my solar power system. I can run this all day on my small solar power system absolutely free of cost.
Now, friends this is the most important and most demanding test which I will show you now. I am hoping you are enjoying this video. I will now show you either this heat gun can be used for SMD soldering and desoldering. Guys I already checked this heat gun for this purpose. Now I will show you this thing. First I will remove the protective cover of the nozzle just by unscrewing one screw. This is the dead inverter. I will use this dead inverter to show you this test. This inverter has many SMD parts. So let's check. Can this heat gun desolder the SMD components of this inverter? After testing this heat gun on the inverter I will use this heat gun to remove the SMD LED from the LED strip. So watch this test carefully and enjoy the video.
Now friends here I want to talk about this. As you can see some kind of problem occurs in this heat gun. The nozzle of this heat gun is deformed. The plastic body around the metallic nozzle is deformed. My friends these are the main things which everyone wants to know before buying any product. So I am telling you that thing which no one will tell you. These things can only be seen through practicals and tests. So this deformation occurs due to non-stop use. Because of the quality is not super. This heat gun did not bear much heat. But in the expensive heat guns they will never have such melting issue. No matter how you use them. This heat gun has its own good things. I like the energy efficient feature of this heat gun. You just believe it is only taking 300 watts and it can be used for many purposes. I am currently running this heat gun on my small 360 watt solar power system. It is running without any issues. I cannot run a 1000 watt heat gun on my small solar system. I like this thing of this heat gun. Friends we can avoid the melting issue. If you use it for 10 to 15 minutes. Then you should off this heat gun for 5 minutes. Let the things cool down. And this is how we can safely use this 300 watt heat gun. Using with this technique caused no issue inside this heat gun. And one thing more I suggest that don't block its nozzle. Because then the heat rapidly increases inside of this heat gun. This heat gun is not built with good quality material so it cannot handle much heat inside itself. Give the nozzle some space so the complete heat comes out from this heat gun. It sucks air from the back. Then air travels inside this heat gun. The propeller inside this heat gun performs this function. Then the air passes inside the container which contains the heating element. Then hot air exits from its nozzles. This is how this heat gun works. Now friends, I pull out the 300 watt heating element. This heating element is built with nichrome wire. Nichrome wire is the best thing to use as a heat generator with electricity. So guys, do you know what this is? This is a full bridge rectifier. Full bridge rectifier. Now I hope you will never forget this thing. Now here is an interesting thing about this heat gun. The manufacturer decreased the voltages for the fan motor with the help of the heating element. They do this to decrease the cost. They did not put extra cost on a specific motor driver circuit. I will find out the resistance of this heating element and also the resistance of the heating element at the point where the fan motor connection is made.
now I am back towards that melting issue. So what is happening here is the metallic nozzle overheated and due to this overheating the plastic around the metallic nozzle has melted the plastic around it. Now the nozzle is fixed with the heat gun body. This nozzle normally can easily be separated from the heat gun but now it is fixed. So I have to release the nozzle from its body and set it again. Because currently the nozzle is deformed. Airflow will not come straight out of the air gun. To solve this issue the quick and only way currently I find is to heat up the nozzle again. And then it will be released from its body. I did this complete process off camera. But I am sharing the CCTV video of that process. So friends, now you can see I successfully separated the nozzle from the body of the heat gun. Which was stuck with each other due to overheating and melting. I have separated the nozzle without giving it further damage. I use iron soldering to heat the metallic nozzle again. So when the nozzle heats up the plastic becomes soft and nozzle come out from it. This is the simple quick solution in case of this kind of problem. I have shown you the complete detail of the 300 watt heat gun. Now all things are done and I will pack this heat gun again. And start it one time just making sure it works fine. Because I am personally going to use this heat gun in my projects. Friends I am requesting you to like this video. Subscribe to my channel and have a look at some of my other interesting projects on my YouTube channel. Friends I have reassembled the heat gun to its original shape. I will plug the wire into 220 volt extension which have the power of my small solar power system. So you can see the heat gun is start again and started working very well. So that's it for now. Stay safe. I hope to see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.